Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Mike. Today I want to talk about a build that's kind of surfacing with Plague and Dead by Daylight. It involves one of our recently changed add-ons, the Prayer Tablet Fragment. This add-on changes Plague's playstyle very heavily and it is kind of difficult for survivors to adapt to. Um, if you didn't know just how the Plague works in general, her power is the Vile Purge. Essentially, she can puke on survivors and make them sick and make it easier for her to kill them. She can also puke on objects, uh, stuff like, you know, lockers, generators, totems. And if survivors were to interact with said objects, they would also get sick. Now, survivors could cleanse themselves at fountains, and then they would heal up, but that would allow Plague the second part of her power, the Corrupt Purge. And if she was to activate said fountains, she could start puking on people, and it would actually start taking health states away from them. So it makes her a lot more deadly to play against if she was to activate her fountains. Um, the way this add-on kind of changes that play style, Vile Purge no longer affects survivors. So this basically changes a majority of the way most people play Plague, from puking on survivors and then downing them, to solely puking on objects and letting survivors interact with said objects. Now typically that would actually be kind of difficult to, you know, play around. You can't infect people on your own anymore, you're kind of relying them on them infecting themselves. What this add-on also does is it increases a object infection duration by 40 seconds. And it also increases the infection from infected objects by 100%. So it increases the rate that you infect yourself by 100%. The reason why this is so good of an add-on is that Plague's base time for infecting objects was already 40 seconds. If you add another 40 seconds on, that's already 80 seconds. You're at a minute 20. If you're to throw this extra add-on in, this is an additional 30 seconds. So you're just shy of having stuff corrupted for just under 2 minutes. That is pretty big. Especially when you have perks like Corrupt Intervention in the game. Where this, you know, this perk will block 3 generators for 120 seconds. It's basically going to funnel all the survivors to play on gens that you can corrupt. All the generators that are closest to you, you can corrupt. Your corruption lasts the exact same duration, or not the exact, but pretty close to corrupt intervention. That basically makes it so that no survivors have a safe generator to work on. And then if you pair that in with just general, you know, game regression add-ons, it makes it incredibly deadly to play against because no matter what, survivors are having to sacrifice health states just to progress the game, and that is extremely deadly. Now... There's a lot of different variations you can do with this build. Um, I know, you know, Eruption isn't everybody's favorite, and one thing that really experienced players would notice is you have a lot of game regression, but it's hard to regress the game if you're not actually catching people. And this build doesn't exactly have any kind of tracking built into her ability, so you kind of have to use perks for tracking, and none of these really use tracking besides Eruption. And while Eruption, you know, isn't isn't the greatest it it just doesn't really pull off the tracking that you kind of need so even if you substitute eruption for something like surveillance um this is also you know it's a lot better but it still just lacks a lot of general tracking that this build kind of needs it doesn't really matter how sick everyone gets if you can't really find anybody um, and I think that's just one part where this build kind of lacks, is that there's effectively zero tracking besides just walking around and conveniently walking, conveniently walking into somebody. Um, that's why I've kind of made a different iteration of this build. Let me go ahead and set it up. Um, the only thing that kind of changes, um, I kind of focus more on the game slowdown aspect of it rather than the game regression aspect of it. I... Personally, I'm using a iridescent add-on, Black Incense, but I'm pairing it with perks that are more orientated towards game slowdown rather than game regression. Um, I think it definitely makes it a lot more frustrating to play against. Um, but, you know, let me go ahead and get it all set up. Alright, so here's the build that I came up with. Um, obviously, you're kind of using a bit more of an expensive add-on. Um, luckily the black incense, it really isn't too hard to get a lot of if you spend a lot of points on plague. 
So it's something that you could realistically just keep playing over and over if you really chose to. Um, the other version of the build would still work pretty well. Um, you just pretty much lose all your tracking. It still has a lot of game slowdown a part of it. But the only perk I have that affects generators is going to be... Well, that affects generator speed, rather. Is Thanatophobia and then Corrupt Intervention. Um, speed as in, like, you know, like they can't work on it, so it's effectively zero on a lot of generators. But... The main point is, is that I have a bunch of status effects that are getting applied all at once. Um, this basically gives survivors a multitude of ways to basically get themselves killed. Um, one really major one I have is Plaything. Um, obviously paired with this add-on, um, I can puke on all the generators. They'll eventually make themselves sick very quickly if they're working on the generators. And they'll start puking. When they're puking, they're basically giving me the tracking for free. This build is essentially free tracking no matter what. If they want to progress the game, I'm going to see where everyone is. No matter what, there's nothing they can do about it. Besides, you know, just start spamming fountains. But, you know, that's, that's not really something you want to do against Plague. Um, so, while they're working on these generators, and... I, you know, I catch them off and I hook them. Um, they're going to have Plaything get activated once they're rescued. Now, since they're back in play, they can either choose to go and try to progress the game more, or they can look around and try to find their Plaything totem. Now, obviously, this sounds terrible because, one, they don't know that I see them all the time when they're puking, but now they also don't have my terror radius whatsoever. So this essentially gives you free mind games at any point of any chase, essentially, as long as they're vomiting. And trust me, people in this, you know, well not, you know, it's not like they choose to vomit a lot, but survivors vomit quite a lot. Um, it's incredibly deadly on a lot of indoor map, pretty much any map that has, or that gives Plague the ability to just drop line of sight and chase people. It makes it absurdly difficult to play against. And they basically choose whether they want to keep playing the game and getting generators done or if they want to play totem hunting simulator and hope that i'm not following them you know and just killing them immediately on top of having plaything i have fearmonger now fearmonger doesn't really fit in a lot of builds but i believe it fits in this one pretty well um after the changes it it works after you have a generator worked over half of its um progression um, before, it, it would go away after you reached 50%. Now, it's always there no matter what. But now, it also applies blinded and exhausted for 5 seconds after they get off of it. So, this effectively enhances the effects of plaything, but also my black incense. Because I will know what generators they're working on, because I'm going to try to effectively keep all of them corrupted and sick constantly, no matter what. So if they're working on a gen, I will see them. And if I do see them, and it's someone that I've hooked before, they're not going to know that I'm coming, because I'm also kind of generally keeping track of if people are doing totems or not, because I'm generally trying to keep everybody sick, and I'm not trying to let anybody cleanse totems. So they're effectively a sitting duck, and most people are going to run exhausted perks in this game. A lot of people became very reliant on them. Um... This essentially stops people from getting sprint bursts if they're in a bad spot or using dead hard or anything. And you'll actually find survivors walking a lot, letting you kind of catch up to them mid chases, trying to just get their exhausted ability back. And it actually ends up screwing a lot of survivors over. Um, I think this perk just adds on to the effects of plaything as well as me just being able to see them constantly. It, it heavily pressures survivors into gameplay that's just never favorable for them. And then to top it off, I have Thanatophobia. This will basically slow down repair speeds by 20%, but the extra kicker is that it reduces totem cleansing speed as well by 20%. So Thanatophobia will synergize heavily with generators as well as plaything and stopping survivors from cleansing their totems. Um, that's generally why I'm not running like Ruin or any other kind of gen regression perk, um, is because I think that Thanatophobia paired with plaything as well as me just having black incense is just a lot of synergy enough. And honestly, just in general, this build has so much synergy within itself that I just find it actually pretty impressive that all these perks that I would never imagine together uh, working so well. It, it's it's actually really cool. And it's essentially all because of this add-on. This build really doesn't work 
all that great without this add-on. This add-on changes the entire aspect and playstyle of this build. I don't think this build would even work unless I had the prayer tablet. Obviously, the black incense is still really, really good, but having objects infected for such a long time makes it so much easier to just actually get people plagued and sick and get that tracking on everybody. It makes her tracking more widespread rather than just people you've already ran into and caught. So I think, you know, black incense, obviously it's, you know, an iridescent, it's obviously kind of okay of an add-on, but I think what really tops it off is having the prayer tablet fragment. And this is a build I'd much rather see run than having, you know, three other perks that are just entirely gen regression and just kind of making it abysmally boring to play as survivor. This one, it makes it definitely really intense for Survivor, but this one, you know, Survivors still have sort of a chance, but it's an incredibly oppressive and very pressuring build to play against. And I'll go ahead and kind of just, you know, let's go ahead and play it and kind of give you a tour of what's what. Okay, it looks like they brought me to, uh, Auto Haven. Alright, so immediately... I have all those generators blocked over there. I'm immediately going to just start puking on all of my gens that I have close by. Let's make our way over to these ones. I don't puke on totems and stuff just yet. I don't really want to hint at any kind of build I have going on. That should hit. I'll just start puking on things that survivors can use. Oh, I didn't hit that window. And a lot of survivors will actually try and play towards you puking on them, which actually gives you a lot of free hits. Um, that's probably something that's only going to be... Uh, what? It's probably only going to be something that happens right now, um, while people aren't really used to playing against this build. Um, I I'm going to wait for those two that are infected right now to break, and then I'll see where they are with their vomit. So they're over there. I want to get this pallet, though. I'm going to break it just so they can't pick it back up if they can. I'm going to make my way over here. Unfortunately, I don't have a plaything on them, so they're going to hear me and start running. They do have Fearmonger, though. I don't know if it stopped any exhausted that they may have had, but I'm gonna also go for this person and get this pallet out of the way. Just gonna swing anyways just to get her to drop it. I'm gonna break this. Go ahead and snuff this bad boy out. Get out of here. Now go ahead and pick this up. Let's get her up on the hook. Give that a kick really quick. Ah, oh, that's really unlucky. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, let's see where everybody's at. I got one person over there. One person right here. I'll kind of just screw with her a little bit, I guess. I'm going to go over here, though. Hmm, that was really smart. Good job, friend. Second, not too big of a survivor. Oh, he messed up. You got dead hard? Nope. Let's get her on a hook really quick. And this build really starts to shine once you get everybody um, a plaything effect on them. Um, hopefully they don't cleanse that totem. I think they're doing it right now. I think that, yeah, they got rid of it. That's kind of just unlucky. I don't, I don't really have any good totem spawns on this map, unfortunately. I'm gonna kick this. They should still be over here. Hello there, ma'am. You got nothing to work with. That's pretty smart, I guess, to just run to a corner, but... Let's go ahead and get her on a hook really quick. Um, I don't know if they can sabo this. I should be able to make this, right? Yeah. Now, 
Obviously, I'm two gens down. This might look really, really bad. Um, this build gets more and more deadly the less generators I have. Because they can either all stay one hit and choose to stay one hit. Or they can start cleansing and giving me my power. But they'll have less gens to do every single time they complete a gem, obviously. But it gives them less opportunity to do a gen that isn't infected. Oh, hello, ma'am. How are you? I didn't see you there. I'm gonna get her on this back hook. So now they're gonna start cleansing. This Lori's done a pretty good job at staying, uh, staying clean. Hey, ma'am. That was rude. You're gonna die for that. I guess not. You have dead art. I think I'm gonna break off and come over here and get this guy. They don't have a pallet here, so this is really good. Hello, ma'am. Down you go. So I actually think I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm gonna kick this gym really quick though. Get that regressing a little bit. I actually have a really good three gen right here. Get that infected in case they don't want to start doing stuff. I saw her right over here. I'm gonna break off and go for her. I know there isn't too much that they have over here. This pallet's gone as well. Hello, ma'am. That pallet's gone. You're gonna get- Oh! I'm boasted! No! Ah, oh, if you took that, man, that would've been so good. Are they gonna let this dude die on the hook? Oh, come on, don't do me like that. I'm trying to showcase something here. Don't be boosted. Get rid of this pallet really quick. Let's check that gen. It's still regressing. That one's not getting worked on. I'm gonna go ahead and take my fountain right here. Let's start spiking up the pressure. Get that down really quick. Usually I'm used to running a build like uh, Infectious with Monitor and it actually makes Plague really really dangerous. As far as, like, slug builds. That's another build I really enjoy on, uh, Plague. But let's go ahead and spike our pressure up really quick. They're obviously gonna go try and heal her. They're gonna make themselves sick if they do. Got her out of the match. Uh, ah, she's too far now. Might as well just take my hook. Hello, Lori. You've been quite elusive. Get you on this back hook. It's really inconvenient for them to run all the way over here and get these unhooks. Really, really nice. So now that they've, for the most part, reset, they have four generators or one, yeah, four generators to choose from. And I can get them all sick. And right now they're cleansing, which is terrible for them to do. Um, essentially, once they're down to about four or five gens left, um, cleansing is basically a death sentence because they're just. Oh, they just start losing a lot of areas that they typically could play in. What the heck? Are you doing this? Cut that out. Crazy. Ooh, you're both on it. That went straight over her? Okay.
Yeah, interesting. Um, I'll be nice and I'll just... I'll let them go and get on hooks and stuff. I'll be nice. Get my Halloween hook. Actually, I never hooked the lorry, did I? I only, uh, I slugged her. Well, they got that totem. I hate how some of these totems aren't exploding now. I don't like that. You ain't gonna get that in time, ma'am. Huh. That was the fattest dead art I've ever seen, Lori. You get a pat on the back. I think I broke Lori. I think she gave up. Ooh, and I get a tree pumpkin. I'm speed hacking. Watch out. Oh. All good things must end. Oh, and you're sick. There you are. Hello, ma'am. You ain't tricking nothing. You ain't tricking nothing. Oh, I was just gonna make this window, though. Oh, I guess not. Don't you have dead art still? Do it. Oh, okay. Mr. Snoop Booper. Death awaits. Unless the hatch is, like, right here. I don't really feel like looking for it. Sorry, pal. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm down to one gen. But... I don't think there's anything wrong with that. They were effectively letting me just ping pong between objects pretty much the entire time. Ooh, Qual Tower. One of my favorites. Bring me here. Oh, look at all those offerings. I feel terrible. All right. So those three gens got blocked. Oh, that's an easy infect. I'm going to work my way around this and then go all the way over to that gen and kind of start my... uh Start my play. Uh, start blarging on all over these. Blah. Blah, blah, blah. Alright. Now I've essentially cut off their ability to do generators without getting infected. Go ahead and just start M1ing everybody. Someone else here. Okay, you know, I'm gonna break this pumpkin. Treat me. Hell yeah. Oh, this guy's healing over here. I'll go ahead and break this. I actually hear a bunch of people. What the heck was that low res freaking door? What the heck? Go ahead and just wait for the Michaela to get broken. Hmm. That's kind of unfortunate. This drop is right above the window. There we go. I'm going to break off. I don't really want to play around this area too much. I'm going to come over here. Reset the timer for that thing. I'm going to go ahead and get a hit on this guy. So hopefully he just starts wasting his med kit again. I'm gonna go around this way since she doesn't have a line of sight. I'm gonna play it this way because I want to get the pallet. Ooh, what are you doing? You got dead art? I, uh, I don't know why you didn't stick with the, uh, shack. And if anybody runs up, I'm gonna just puke on that really quick. I'm actually just gonna break off and go for the hit. So that was a really early cleanse coming on. That's actually really weird. Ooh, I heard you. Let's get my first play thing totem out. I'm gonna come over here and pressure this person. Keep that generator infected. All my other gens are open now. If she doesn't want to play this, she's gonna get sick. Okay. 
Same thing for both of these. I'm actually gonna let her just go over there. I don't need to worry about that area too much. She touches that, she's gonna get sick. A big point of this build is just to make sure that if survivors are gonna play around things, that you make sure that they can get sick because of it. What that Fang did was actually really smart, but it's not gonna work out forever. I can slowly whittle everything away. Man, they're really just cleansing. And the thing about that is, is that I can still take this thing. Which I now have plenty of. He's probably gonna drop this pallet. Oh, he didn't? Wow. That was really smart. I would have tried to hug that and try to drop that pallet on me. That was pretty much this dude's only play. Now I'm gonna get him into the basement as well. They have made this match very dire for themselves with their fearfulness of being sick. But honestly, it's pretty justified. Let's pay a visit over here, see if they're on this gen. Now, I don't want to take any more of my fountains just yet. I want to let it wear out and start infecting things again. They start making people sick. Like this girl over here. Um, I really want to take that fountain, but I won't be able to take the fountain and get it down on her. Hopefully push her this way, though. Get this one out of the way. So that's good. I'm going to keep on that over there. I'm actually going to take my power and try to steroid my uh, pressure. I need some downs very desperately. Oh, man. Luckily, she's infected and I can see her through walls. She's my only hook, and probably one of the only ways I'm going to get people sick as of right now, so I need to get her on a hook. Let's go pay a visit over here. Where'd you go, Naya? Wait, did I just say Naya? What the fuck? Oh, that got her. Hell yeah, dude. You cut across too early. Let's get her on a hook. There's actually one thing I haven't tried. Can I puke on survivors when they're on a hook? Do they count as an object instead? They don't. That's good to know. Hello, ma'am. You have quite heavy feet. Mm, I'm gonna run around this way. I don't... I don't want to loop this area. This is actually really strong. I should have peeked on that the first go around. That was actually a really big misplay. Ah, oh, man. Hard. Hopefully I can get her before she reaches this pallet over here. There we go. Man, these guys are cleansing very, very quickly. I've never seen this before, if I'm being honest. They're cleansing so often, so fast. Go ahead and make sure all these hot button generators are plagued, I guess. I'm gonna hit this totem as well. I'm gonna starve them of objectives to do. I swear I'm not camping. I apologize, ma'am. 
But I gotta do what I gotta do. Well, there you are. Uh, I was kind of hoping you had borrowed time, pal, but I guess you just rescued her without it. Got that window puked on there. I'm just gonna run around this way. I don't think he's gonna drop it. He's now sick. I'm actually gonna get this one regressing. We're not touching this. Maybe that's one misplay I've been making. I, I probably should have been kicking all these gens that they are avoiding now. Due to the sickness. Damn, you're already cleansing again. Crazy, dude. That actually got him pretty... Oh, he kept going. You're crazy, dude. You're insane. Let's get this guy on a hook. This is a really obscure playstyle. I haven't faced it. This is actually really good. I'm gonna take this. Where's all my infected gamers at? One over there. Oh, they're both over here. Very nice. There's one right there. I'm gonna go get you. See if she's paying attention. I think she ran the other way around. Ooh, that was smart. Oh, that wasn't smart. What the heck? You have calm spirit. The doctor isn't reworked anymore. Why the heck are you using that, dude? Putting a lot of pressure on this frog person. Are they rescuing this person? They were. Oh, I was hoping that would get her. Oh, that was so close. Dang. Oh, these pallets are still up. Just gonna drop it. Go ahead. Oh, I guess I should have stopped. Hello, ma'am. The flashlights only do you so good. I still have ears. Damn. I've never played against survivors that, like, weren't trolling that were cleansing this much. Guess I'll just whip this guy out. Um, which ones were open? That one was for use, and so was. I think it's that middle one. I don't. I don't remember. God, that gets everybody, man. That done tricks everybody. Oh, I should have known she was gonna do that. Oh, uh, she's learning. She's learning. Too bad I'm OPOP. -OP. I guess one good thing to note is that they're gonna get gens done no matter what, but the game's, you know, already effectively getting harder for them the less gens they have to work on in areas that they choose. But I'm also limiting it by infecting pretty much every generator at that point. And no matter what generator they try to work on, they're going to end up getting sick and infected. As long as I'm, you know, infecting them, obviously. I don't really need to anymore, but... You know, I'm down to two people now, but... It gets much more difficult for survivors to progress the game. So much so that it pretty much comes down to a halt. And I think that is kind of what really makes this build shine. Rather than just being really oppressively boring and slow. Hey, here's pop along with oppression along with eruption. Oh, da I hope you didn't plan on playing. I think these survivors did incredibly well though.
Like, it's by far the first group that I've had. Ah, oh, she got it. You luck. You lucker. It's the first group that I've had that has opted into constantly cleansing. That actually made it a little bit more difficult. So that's a good counteractive part to this build, but... It was, you know, clearly still a little too much. But yeah, I mean, they got they got some pretty, you know, decent builds on all of them. And this build still... I mean, you know, it was looking a, bit, a little bit dicey at one point, but honestly, I felt pretty calm, collected, and in control for a majority of that match. I don't think I necessarily played too, like, aggressively mean or anything. I think that was a pretty chillaxed game. I kind of just wrote out the synergies of all my perks in the add-on. And uh, there you have it. Uh, that's kind of the build in action. I definitely enjoy this build. Honestly, now that I've been kind of spamming this build and playing it, I don't really understand how I was playing Plague before. Uh, this add-on is pretty revolutionary, I think. I, I feel like it definitely changes the kind of weird playstyle that Plague kind of had and makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, especially when you pair it with the right perks. Um, obviously, you could still run, you know generator focused perks i personally don't i find it very boring cluttering a build with just nothing but regression perks i think it makes it very one-dimensional and stale this adds a whole multitude of elements that survivors have to play around and kind of overcome and i think it just makes it way more interesting to kind of play and to kind of watch in general you know but obviously you know this this is just a build of many that are probably going to you know come out and surface you could even change this to any kind of liking that you want um, you could even do stuff like Hematite Seal and then switch out, you know, like, Thanatophobia and Corrupt for stuff like Ruin and Undying, and then maybe switch out playthings since you're gonna have a bunch of totems spawn and you could do something else. There's a whole multitude of things you can do and, and to add tracking as well, like, if you have Ruin, um, Surveillance is always a really good one if you're good at pushing survivors off gens. Um, th there's just so many ways to kind of enhance this build. But I think this add-on right here is a really big game changer, and I think it's kind of something that the game really needs right now. I think it needs add-ons that kind of change playstyle rather than just adding on to strengths of killers. It changes playstyle, it makes the matches feel a bit different, it makes them play out, you know, certainly it makes them play out different. Um, and overall, I, th I think this is actually a, a really, you know, good change, and I kind of hope the game kind of trends more towards changes like this. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of just what I wanted to go over. Um... I hope everybody, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you'll feel inspired to kind of start experimenting with this add-on and kind of playing with builds kind of like as I have. Um, but yeah, uh, if you've watched it to here, you know, I I greatly appreciate it. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Um, and uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, it's nighttime. So uh, have a good night. If not, you know, have a have a good existence. I hope, hope you're all doing well. But uh, yeah, take care. Make good choices. Be good people. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the, uh, see you by the campfire, I guess. I don't know. Bye-bye.